What's up, everyone? Welcome back to episode five of Track Talk Podcast. We are your hosts, Emma and Hannah, and we actually, I've already talked too much. We need to get into it. Louis de Ferrari. Louis de Ferrari. Yeah. Uh... Chain of events. <laughs> it was Thursday night, and our girls' group chat was kind no, of going Wednesday off. No, it was Wednesday night. Wednesday night. Mm-hmm. Okay. Our girls' group chat was kind of going off. When I say our girls' motorsport group chat, that includes myself and Emma and Callie in Boston. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, it was originally just like murmurs. And then I believe Will Buxton tweeted something along. And I don't know, I don't, I hate when they do this. They tweeted, it was like, it was like, if this is true, it'll be the biggest new, biggest shock to hit the F1 world since blah, 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 something like that. I'm Mm -hmm. like, I hate when they do that. They did it too. Um, Last year, there was another uh, something that happened and they did. I think when they teased Danny coming back, I don't actually remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, No, you're right. You're right. It was like, just tell us what's going on. Yeah. Or don't say anything at all, because mm-hmm. now we don't know. And now we're going to speculate, and no one likes it when there's speculation. Yeah. But we did. Mm-hmm. And there was tweets that were murmuring about, about Lewis. And I was convinced. I was like, no. Like, he's not leaving Mercedes. I didn't think so either. I had I had called, like, I FaceTimed Boston later, and we were like, no. No, no, no. Like, we were, we were like, this isn't this isn't happening. Like, he's yeah. so tied to Mercedes. Mm-hmm. We'll wake up the next morning at like 7 a.m. And it was pretty much official because Sky Sports posted it. Yeah. And Sky Sports doesn't usually get They're not super involved in like the, the gossip, yeah. like rumor part of things. If Sky Sports is posting it and they're an Italian broadcast mm-hmm. um, entity. So to me, when Sky Sports posted it, I was like, oh, this came from Ferrari HQ itself. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. And it's official. It took a while for any teams to, like Mercedes or Ferrari, to come out and say anything. Lewis waited a few days to yeah, say anything. Yeah, just yesterday, Lewis finally said something. But, yeah, I could not do any. I couldn't do anything. And we had that, we were yes. interviewing David that day. Yes. And we were just like, how are we supposed to do, like, we, okay, first of all, go listen to that interview or go watch it on YouTube because it's really funny. Yeah. So, um, thank you. I watched it back and I found myself laughing I at laughed. ourselves. I know. <laughs> <laughs> when I was editing it, I could not stop laughing. I think it's like it's just it's just a funny episode. Um, one of our friends, McKenna, um, she texted me and she's like, "You guys just seem so giddy." I'm like, "We, we weren't necessarily giddy, but we all had the giggles, mm-hmm. and we just couldn't stop." Like he would start laughing, and then I would start <laughs> laughing, and then I asked him about the Photoshop thing. Which look, James Hinchcliffe also thought it was real. So yeah. thank you for justifying my madness, Hinch, because. I, there is no part of me that thought that was photoshopped. <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. I thought it was. I thought it was real too. But anyway, go watch that. That episode is out. Um, but we we got we got. I don't want to say we got through it, but like we did the interview. Yes. Because uh, that was our focus, and then afterwards it was just like Louis to Ferrari. Like mm-hmm. what? What are your What are your thoughts? Actually, before I ask you yeah, for your yeah. thoughts, let's just let's just dive into what we know. Okay. Okay. Apparently. <laughs> He's getting 100 million euros from yes, Ferrari. Yes, I heard that. Charles gets, I think, 55 or 60. In yeah. It's at his contract. Uh, I think Lewis worked it in that he wants 20 million of it to go to Mission 44. Yes. That's his foundation. Yeah. So that that makes sense. Yeah. Um, but I, f- I feel like you pay your number one driver more. Do you know what I mean? But here, th- that's where the question can be posed. Who is their number one driver? Who is their number one driver? I don't, I don't know. I, I know. don't know. I'd love to know how Charles feels about all this. Do you th- like? Do you think they knew for a while? Like, do you think Charles knew for a while? I think he probably knew that there was um, conversations being had, but I don't know if he knew that it was going to happen when yeah. it happened. I don't know. Like, I, I really truly don't because seemingly he knew he, that Carlos wasn't going to be his teammate. Okay. It just seemed like contract talks between Ferrari and Carlos um, were had gone cold, and and then there's been all those rumors about him um, going to Sauber when it turns to Audi. Um, so I think he probably just knew he was getting a new teammate. I don't know if he had much input on who it was. I'm sure he's extremely happy to have like Lewis Hamilton as his teammate. Like that is it's Lewis Hamilton. It's Lewis Hamilton. It's Lewis it, Hamilton. I almost said eight time world. It is seven time world champion Lewis Hamilton. And those two have a good relationship, Charles and Lewis, seemingly. But I'm sure there's also the competitive part of him that's like, who is prioritized? Yeah. You know? Because Charles was prioritized. Charles was. And now, you know, you're bringing in Lewis Hamilton. 
I don't think he's, I don't think Charles will be prioritized. You know, if Ferrari did what, seemingly did whatever they could to get Lewis on that team mm -hmm. to get him signed for 2025. Mm -hmm. And I don't know though, because I, as loyal as Charles is to Ferrari, Ferrari is to him. So I don't know. Unless it's just, they're just going to have to wait to see um, production wise what comes of both drivers and then just go from there, which is pretty much what they have done. Like they, they, this past season, Carlos was outperforming Charles a lot. Um, and they did give him the edge on a couple races. I mean, I think that everyone knew that Charles was still their number one, but I think just in terms of like, what's the best um, option for the team and for points wise right now, like, what are we going to do? That's probably what they, mm -hmm. the, the angle they would take. But I don't know if you read this as well. Um, I don't, it, there's been multiple, multiple sources who have um, said that um, but kind of the catalyst of all this was that Lewis really did want to sign with Mercedes again, and he wanted a three-year deal, and he wanted um, a bra uh, not a brand he wanted an ambassador role after that, so he should be a Mercedes ambassador. So mm -hmm. um, once he retired from racing, he still was involved within um, the team, and seemingly Mercedes was like, "We'll give you a one-year deal, no ambassadorship." And I think it seem it seems like at that point was when he was like. Okay, so here I am trying to be loyal to this team that's not being loyal to me. I've given so much. I don't know. I'm just speaking for him now, but I'm just thinking like that seems to be the point where he decided to switch contract talks to, I don't know if there was other teams involved, but obviously Ferrari was involved. John Elkan had reached out to him over a year ago now. So I think he knew that Ferrari wanted him anyways. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really shocked that Mercedes wouldn't just give... Lewis, what he wanted. A three-year deal is nothing. Mm -hmm. He's going to race for Ferrari for three years. Mm -hmm. And he's not, his production has not dropped at all. He was, what, did he finish um, third third last year? Mm -hmm. So I I don't understand what angle Mercedes is taking here. I don't know. Um, well, and for Mercedes as well, I think it it was a two-year contract that they had given Lewis with the, the clause to leave the at the end clause. of 2024. Yeah. Um, and so Lewis already took that. Yeah. I don't, I'm just, I'm thrown off that it was so easy for him to leave Mercedes. Like that Mercedes, it, it seemed like they didn't try to keep him. Does that, does that make sense? No, I know what you mean. Um, I don't think you mean like it was easy for Lewis to leave because I really don't think it oh, was no, easy no, for no. Lewis to leave. Oh, no, no, no. It wasn't an easy team. decision, but like it's, contract yeah. wise, yeah. it was easy for him to just be done. I'm, it sounds like he really did try to make it work, mm -hmm. to make something work um, regarding Mission 54. That's something, obviously. 54? Oh, my God. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> Exhausted. Mission 44, that was really important to him. Mm -hmm. um, and to work that into his contract was seemingly something that he was, like, not willing to budge on, mm -hmm. um, obviously. And Ferrari was willing to do that for him. And then the ambassadorship, and he really wanted a three-year deal. So it sounds like Mercedes wasn't compromising with him. Um, so I don't necessarily know if it was like that easy for him to leave per se, but, um, contractually they didn't meet what they needed to, I believe last or what, what was the terms of his exit clause? He could just leave. It was, it was, I'm, that was it. I don't know. Cause someone... remember last year we were talking about Charles's exit clause and it was, if Ferrari doesn't finish top three in constructors, then he can activate his exit clause. So there was no activation. Um, from what I know no okay because the season hasn't even happened that's yet. true that's true that he was signed on for this year yeah. and for, for the next i mean correct us if we're wrong but no I no, think no you're it right was just him being able to just decide to be done yeah i don't know but uh, there were sources that said that when the winter break started he was still very keen on saying mm -hmm. like that's what the conversations were like mm -hmm. he had no plans on leaving so i think lewis is going to retire in the next three years mm -hmm. sometime in the next three years and he wants to retire with Ferrari. Like, I don't, I mean, I don't think that's like a hot take or anything. Like that's no, been, no, no. yeah. Not, it's, it's definitely not a hot take. Yeah. He said it himself in his, in his, um, whatever, his posts yeah. saying, I want to fulfill a childhood dream and race in exactly. Ferrari. Yeah. So not that I think Ferrari is going to give him a winning car. I don't, I don't, I don't think they're winning any championship this year. Um, but Mercedes isn't either. Mm -hmm. So if Lewis knows both of these ships are sinking, jump on the ferrari ship mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well you know? for something he's always wanted mm -hmm. then i don't blame him no 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 absolutely not but um i like, don't i'm not mad about this driver duo at all like i think lewis and charles is, is an insane duo you don't have 
okay, it's very rare you have two drivers on a team that could both are capable be number of one drivers cha- yeah. and both yeah. capable of winning championships. Yeah. Like, this is so rare. Like, do you know what I mean? Yeah, but it, it causes, it can cause problems. Yeah. Look at the last time. I mean, I would, I would argue the last time that you had two world championship contenders on the same team was Lewis and Nico Rosberg. Mm-hmm. And look what happened there. Yeah. I don't know if since then you could argue Checo was in line for a world championship. I think Max was going to take it no matter what. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's my opinion. But um, it does cause some rifts. rifts. Yeah. It can cause rifts between a team, um, strategists, whatnot. Um, Bono is going with him. Is that confirmed? I believe so. Okay, everywhere I've read it, it hasn't been mm, Okay, so maybe it's just like a like a rumor thing. Mm-hmm. I don't imagine that Lewis does not come with Bono. I don't, well, Bono's contract isn't with Lewis, it's with Mercedes. So it would have to be... Oh, yeah, I know you're right. Whatever, it, he would have to work something out with the team if he really wants to follow Lewis. And other news, Javi's being re-signed as Charles's um, engineer, so... I saw that today or yesterday. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, who okay? Who replaces Lewis? God, I hope it's Alex Albon. Hey, did you see all those rumors circulating that Red Bull? I sent them to our group chat. Okay, yeah, but then Red Bull came back afterwards and was like, "We don't know anything about these rumors." Yeah. Okay, so to explain what happened, um, very strong conversations came out, or very strong rumors were circulating about. Red Bull getting ready to sign Alex Albin for 2025 and on. Um, and it kind of, like, it was very, very believable, right? Seemed like it. And then, what, a day later, Red Bull sources and, like, people with close ties to the team, they were like, no, we don't know where these rumors came from. Yeah, yeah. So people think that it was Alex's PR team that kind of started it to get the conversation going and get Mercedes to look into Alex as a okay play- chess not checkers if that's true exactly <laughs> you know because now the conversation is is circulating around circulating around him yeah and if mercedes is like oh my god no red bull signed him we want him yeah they'll step in yeah yeah i think that um which would be really funny if it was alex's pr team no i know <laughs> there's obviously a year till they have to make mm-hmm. a decision on this but so i'm wondering if maybe mercedes is going to and toto is going to um wait to see how the season begins and how Alex is performing in the Williams. Um, I just, the other drivers that have been tied to this seat um, are names like Mick Schumacher. I don't see Toto taking that risk. That's Mm. quite a risk. We know that, that Toto is um, a supporter of Mick. Mick's a reserve driver. He's been within the team. We know that Mick is a talented driver, but to go and immediately, he hasn't been in formula one for two years now to just put him in the Mercedes would be a risk. Mm -hmm. So um, I don't see that happening personally. I see um, potentially, and this is like, I have absolutely no basis for this, but I could see Esteban Ocon going into that seat. Because, right? Okay. So Esteban Ocon was a reserve driver for Mercedes. Yeah. 2018? No, 2019. And so so he lost it from Force India Mm -hmm. because then Lawrence took over the year after and it was racing point. And Lance took that seat. And Lance took that seat. And Toto saw the potential in Esteban, um, took him under his wing, pretty much what he did with is doing with Mick right now. Mm-hmm. Esteban became a reserve driver. And Toto really rooted heavily for him and like spoke publicly about how good of a driver Esteban is. Well, he was his manager. Yeah, exactly. And then he also, I'm pretty sure, played a really big part in getting Renault to sign him. Yeah. And now Renault is Alpine, obviously. Yeah. But to, I like... Not saying that I think Esteban deserves that Mercedes seat, but there is a tie between Esteban yeah. and Toto. Yeah, I, I that this echo would that. not shock me. Yep. So I echo that. I don't think Esteban had. We know how I feel about Esteban. I do not think he had a good season last year at all. Do I think that that's normal Esteban Ocon behavior? No. So, just based on recent driver production, I don't think that Toto can put him in that seat unless, like I said with Alex, the beginning of this year goes really well. Um. So we'll have to just wait and see. I just... What about Fernando? I've seen these rumors. It doesn't make sense to me. It doesn't make sense. There's like a... Okay, this is the wrong term. But like billionaires club. Like Toto and Lawrence are friends. There's this other guy who's involved. 
like they're all really good friends and like fernando is kind of part of that are you ready for some delusion always this is track talk always okay this is how my brain's working right now lawrence sells aston martin backs mercedes you're saying he's friends with toto he takes on a role as an investor um but puts a lot of money into the into the team so much that he gets like a title like a a, a whatever a, a <laughs> something like, like um, something like a title that like doesn't actually mean that he's in the garage all the time just like a, a formality like a like helmet marco was red bull sure yeah okay okay what <laughs> moves lance to mercedes no way Toto would let Lance stroll in that car. I would love to see it, but that does not happen. The rumors are Lawrence wants to... If this happens, I'm not even kidding. I'm going to streak across <laughs> the whole track. <laughs> if Lance gets moved to Mercedes, then we know 100% all Mercedes cares about is money. Because they wouldn't put, I love Lance, I love him. They wouldn't put him in a Mercedes if they're trying to win a championship. No, I agree. But well, well, I, you don't think Lance has the has the talent in a good car? If Mercedes has a okay, good car, okay. If he car, had a good car, yes. I don't think Mercedes is gonna have a good car. But I think I also think Mercedes are thinking that George Russell is their number one driver for the future. Which is that's. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, I have thoughts on that too. But anyways, I'm just saying facts here. Facts based on rumors. So rumors. Lawrence wants to sell Aston Martin. Lance does not have a contract that has a certain start and end date. Seemingly, he could go wherever he wants at any time. He's going to stick with his dad. And Lawrence and Toto are friends. Okay. That's Hannah's theory. <laughs> To be fair, I don't want that to happen at all. I want I want Alex to take the Mercedes seat. I Me want too. Mick to go to Williams. Yeah. What about Rick Bull? I'm sorry? Rick Bull 2025. Rick Bull? Yes. Come on, figure Ricardo? It out. Yes. To Red Bull. There's been so many rumors about oh, that it's the okay, worst we, kept secret in the paddock at the moment. We haven't okay, we want to do a, a F1 bingo card. Mm-hmm. So one of one of my squares is gonna be Checo is Checo loses his seat halfway through or it's confirmed that he's not re-signing. Like somehow, some way Danny Rick is getting back to Red Bull. That's mm-hmm. like that's not now that we know Lando's not going to Red Bull, Danny Rick's going to Red Bull. And Checo retires. Oh. Or what do you think? Yeah. 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 <laughs> he retires. Or he this this just came out of nowhere. He goes to uh, it's not Alfa Romeo anymore. It's Stake F one, but both Valtteri and Joe have contracts at the end of twenty twenty four. So they're both up at the end of this season. And if Carlos and Checo for twenty twenty five, because Audi's taking over Stake F one yeah. pretty much. And I could I could see that. Hmm. Right. Not that i mean joe and valtteri are both good drivers but they're also not really doing anything we talked about this a lot last season like they weren't i don't know if it was them or if it was the car the car was so mediocre they're just they didn't really like there was do, a few dnfs but like not that many they weren't and, good they weren't bad they right. just like they're not doing anything yeah and so if i feel like it would make sense for audi to take carlos and if they can take checo all right so we both put out two delusional theories. Yeah, we we'll have see. nothing to back this Absolutely up. Absolutely none. Nothing at all. <laughs> so someone people were talking about Lewis's fashion line because Plus 44, mm-hmm. it's his clothing brand, right? Um, and Ferrari drivers aren't allowed to come up with their own clothing line because mm-hmm. of, one, Ferrari's fashion line and also the deal that they have with Puma. With Puma, yeah. Um, so Ferrari is clearly breaking their own rules. But also at the same time, Lewis is coming into this contract with a fashion line already. It's not like he's starting it while being signed. Right. So I don't know if we see Charles walking into the paddock with some plus 44. Like, I will not be upset hey, with that. if they're not wine or bleached pants. Get rid of those I'm pants. I'm so happy. Yeah. Like, I'm actually super looking forward to how Charles's style, style changes being teammates with Lewis Hamilton. I know. 
I'm excited for it because yeah. it has to. Yeah. Like, um, there's no way Lewis is going to walk into the paddock wearing, like, okay, I'm just picturing those, like, thing one and thing two sweatshirts yeah, that they too. wore, those, those Vegas, sweatshirts. Vegas sweatshirts. Lewis yeah. would, he would not wear that. No, no. So, if Lewis says no, can't Charles be like, wait, wait, I'm saying no too. Like, you know, can't he I just. I don't think Charles would. I don't know. He's like, yeah, I'll do whatever you want. I don't know. No problem. Um, did you have people outside of your motorsport circle asking you about this? I, okay. So I showed up to work. Um, I was wearing my Ferrari jacket and all black. I was in mourning because not that I'm sad, but it's the end of an era at Lewis at Mercedes. I walked into work and the first thing I said to everyone near my desk was, Lewis Hamilton is going to Ferrari. And I just went off. They just all let me kind of go off about it. And then when I was done, my one coworker was like, I have no idea what any of that meant. I also was received so many messages like from other people in the workplace, like just like Teams messages, like of links and like people coming by my desk being like, did you hear the news? I'm like, yes, I heard the news. Like Carla, like my roommate, my best friend, she texted me and she's like, what? So who gets the boot? And I was like, Carlos gets the boot. And she likes Carlos, right? She likes Lewis. Oh, likes Lewis, right? Yeah. You? Yeah. My parents are, um, they have been out of town for the past week and had no service where they were. But uh, had enough servers to send me a text to say, wow, Lewis to Ferrari. You know. So that shows you the magnitude of it. Also, you had posted on your personal Instagram story um, something about, like, for those of you um, who don't know, this is, like, Zane Zane leaving One Direction. Yeah. Well, my best friend Tori sent your story to me and was like, now these are terms I can understand. Well, it's true. (laughs) Like, it's just, yeah, yeah, it came out of nowhere. It's like he's part of that team. Uh, Zane was part of that band. Yeah. There was no talks of him leaving. Then one day he's just not there. Yeah. Like that's what it is. It's the Formula One equivalent of Zane leaving One Direction. Yeah. I know. It's just wild because Lewis is such a known name in the sport that even if you don't follow motorsports, you still, you can still grasp. Lewis is a, to... is a global brand. Yeah. So it's, you can He's still... not a motorsport brand. Like I'm talking about his personal brand. He's mm-hmm. a global so icon you see his name in the news you know something big is going on yeah so yeah even people who don't know anything about motorsports were reaching out i mean mind you if you watched any sports or any sports like recap um news show for a whole eight years you saw pretty much just lewis mm-hmm. winning yeah. <laughs> can we link this back to alex albin's appendix yeah, I've seen this, actually. I don't know if we can. So the people that do this make me laugh because that's delusion to, to its fullest. But um, the, there's two groups of people that make me laugh the hardest. And that's the Alex Albon appendix um, train. Yeah. And then also the Nick Latifi hit the wall train. I mean, it's not like that crazy or anything if you think about it. But um, Nick Latifi hits the wall. Mac- it ends in Max Verstappen winning his first Drivers World Championship. Um. And okay. three years later, Lewis leaves Mercedes. Like, it, there's more, there's more there's steps, more steps to, it to it than it, that. Yeah. But I don't know. If someone can figure out how this ties back to Alex's appendix, please let us know. There is some way that this happens. And if you are that person who wants to figure it out, please do. Yeah. Nicholas Eiffy's hitting the wall um, is actually way more relevant to this mm-hmm. than that, the appendix. Yeah. But, I mean, F1 Twitter will F1 Twitter, so. I love F1 Twitter sometimes. Yeah. Um, this is also interesting timing. I was talking to Caitlin about this. Caitlin, like IndyCar Caitlin. Mm -hmm. Um, just the timing of it all and about how the news of Andretti not being confirmed as an 11th race seat and then right away the news of Lewis signing with Ferrari came out like a day after. It almost kind of masked Andretti because F1 was under a lot of fire when it came out. Yeah, people were really mad Personally, I I was like, all right. I didn't really have any like personal or emotional attachment to it. It was because it. of what pissed. they said. Uh, we do not believe that the applicant has shown it would add value to the championship. That's what I saw. We don't believe that the applicant would be a competitive participant. Yeah. And that F1 would bring more value to Andretti and not Andretti bringing value to, to F1. F1. But like, I'm sorry. Um, Andretti is one of the most well-known names in You're motorsports in the You're telling me that Gene US. Haas is bringing a, an audience to F1? You're telling me that Haas is a competitive participant? 
but Andretti wouldn't be. Look, I've said it from the beginning. If I'm the Andretti family buy and Haas. Andretti Global, buy Haas. Buy Haas. Gene's, he's got to be bleeding money at this point in that team. Buy Haas revamp the entire team that's a little bit of a middle finger to f1 because they still get their foot in the door but not in the way that it's they just, wanted to it's insulting for people who know andretti like yeah. michael andretti honestly yeah. one of the most successful drivers um in american open wheel racing mario andretti um one of the only three drivers to have won races in formula one indycar nascar and the sports car championship yeah, yeah. like you're telling me that the history, the legacy, the name is there. Absolutely. Like I that that's just the reasoning is bullshit. I I can get behind that 100 percent So that's why people are pissed. And then they're like, well, we gotta do something about it. Can we drop the news about Lewis mm-hmm. moving to Ferrari? Mm-hmm. Like, because why would they announce something like this before the 2024 season yeah. even starts? Yeah. No, yeah. it's true. It's true. It's just a classic PR case. Mm-hmm. When you hear when you hear the, the name Mario Andretti. Does the Gwen Stefani song play in your head? Oh my god. <laughs> Interesting. I love Gwen Stefani, so. Yeah, you're telling me that Mario Andretti featured on Gwen Stefani's song. Wouldn't that value to Formula yeah. One? Like, <laughs> don't think she's mentioned any other race car driver, but okay. <laughs> you know you've made it when. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> right? Uh, okay, sorry. I totally glossed over this. Um... Are we going to get a Lewis and Charles collab? Like a On song? what? Uh, oh, song? Yeah. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Did you see? His Spotify got hacked. <laughs> <laughs> what? Charles this- Leclerc <laughs> is so unintentionally funny. Like, I really don't think he's ever, like, tried to be comedic in his life. And he is. Like... <laughs> he probably just sent that post out to be like it's not me but it was hilarious yeah my spotify got hacked i haven't started singing yet yet the yet <laughs> are you going to <laughs> like what? and then i mean it doesn't help i i woke up this morning and i don't know if you also just scroll tiktok to wake mm. up like i'm just like need brain needs simulation tiktok the yeah. first thing that came onto my for you page was i'm sure all of you f1 fans have seen it the goat simulator video. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> well, when Lando's like, no, mate, you don't milk the goats. <laughs> you are the goat. <laughs> Anyways, in that video, Charles is also in- extremely in- unintentionally funny. So that's just on the brain, but. <laughs> that's good. Um, that killed me. Lewis and Red. That'll be. I've seen. Um pictures already it's gonna take some getting used to yeah it it will he just looks so sharp in like the black race Mm -hmm. suits or like the silver car like it's the same way that i i feel charles looks best in red i was like lewis just looks so good in the mercedes kit right how do you think carlos is gonna perform this year oh well i'll tell you what he's not giving up anything for charles to win a race oh no 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 he elbows out he yeah is he's not fighting. defending behind charles Mm-mm. no i think that carlos knows he really had not that he hasn't proved himself as a driver already but he's like i don't have a, a seat after this year yeah so i will literally do whatever it takes to prove i'm a good driver i assume the signs camp is already in contract talks yeah. Um, so I'm not too, too worried, but he'll be fine. But yeah. Okay. Wait, we're going to back it up to NASCAR real quick. Okay. I've been watching NASCAR this week. Not actually NASCAR. I've been watching a documentary. Mm-hmm. Like I said, I'm a slut for a docuseries. Not really doing it for me though. I can't find like much. This sounds so bad. I'm not finding much to like. There's one guy that has kind of been like, Oh, yeah, I might root for him. And it's the one... I don't even remember his name. He's got the Italian girlfriend. She's super cute. And then his sister's dating the other driver. See, I'm not... I haven't I made it that far. Name. I don't know his name. Well, it was like episode four, so it wasn't like that far. But uh, no one else is likable for me. Denny Hamlin? I feel like him and I have beef. <laughs> I feel like a lot of drivers think that with Denny Hamlin. Okay, but the thing with him, which blew my mind, which we talked about... Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He is a race car driver for Joe Gibbs Racing he that's he's an athlete has been for years but he is also a co-owner of a team with michael jordan yeah so he 
owns that team and it's Ty Ty it's Ty Reddick. Tyler, Tyler Reddick, Reddick and, and Bubba Wallace. Bubba Wallace. Actually, that, I do like Bubba Wallace. I, like I think Bubba. he's got a good personality. He they drive for it, the team is uh 2311. So they both race for that. And Denny owns that team, but he's a driver for a different team. And I'm just like, I couldn't wrap my head around Yeah, that it was kind of interesting because they were saying in the first episodes, there's like one spot left in the playoff race. And it was like Bubba Wallace, his athlete, or it was his, his teammate, teammate, which was Joe Gibbs's grandson. Um, It was another Tyler. Ty, Ty Gibbs. Ty Gibbs. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Um, And he wanted Bubba Wallace to get that last Ryan playoff spot, Blaney. which he did. I like him. He's, Wait, I think that's the one I was talking about. He's a Penske driver. I think that's the one I was talking about. I like him. He also won the 2024 NASCAR Cup Series. No, 2023. He won like last year. Bibbs, we just started this year. Okay, but the the docu-series only starts with the playoffs. So it doesn't do any of like the preseason races. Yes. Which is like a whole... That's the driver you That's like? the one I was talking Ryan about where Blaney. I was like... Cute he's Italian so girlfriend and his sister's dating another NASCAR driver. He's yeah, so no, yeah. He, I, Team Penske driver. He just had like a good, mm-hmm. good story about he him. He seems great. Yeah. Um. Oh, they got engaged in December. I love that. Congratulations. Oh, you liked it on the Track Talk account because we follow him. Oh. Because <laughs> Team Penske, they don't have a, a single, they don't have a social media platforms for each of their teams. Yeah. It's like all on one. So I saw a lot of Ryan Blaney stuff. Um. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I can't form an opinion about any of these drivers. Look, I can appreciate what Denny Hamlin has done in NASCAR just from what I've seen, which is very like little, just like mm-hmm. I'm hearing about his accomplishments, like 50 wins is crazy. Um, I feel like he would not be the type of driver that I would root for. And I feel the same way about the watermelon man. <laughs> What's his name? I don't know. No, Emma, did you watch one episode? I just watched the first one. Oh I couldn't. God. I have had no time. You were like, oh, I'm watching the documentary. I'm like, oh, okay. I, I didn't finish. watched one episode. Okay. One episode. <laughs> There's a lot then, going on. Wait, you watched one episode and then started watching the race yesterday? Yeah, I wanted to watch the race. Oh my gosh. You're what? <laughs> you're so funny. Um, okay, well, you didn't get to us. That obviously doesn't make sense to you, but there is a driver oh. whose background, his family's watermelon farmers. So if he wins and he's, he's like a, another like, aggressive but like super winningest driver um yeah winningest is a word by the way i okay um his i don't remember his name but if he wins he like smashes a watermelon on the track interesting i can't remember his name huh. oh ross chastain okay yeah i don't think i like him either but ryan blaney we like you we like you ryan blaney i like you roman grosjean or no <laughs> I, I like, like you, you david, david lucas, lucas. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I did watch the NASCAR race yesterday. It was a gimmick. It was very interesting. Apparently, no other races are like that. Clash so what at the was... Coliseum. It's not a race. It's a like a soccer field or a football stadium that they turn into a really short oval. And it's like a lead up to the Daytona 500. And it's like um, there's supposed to be music. It's supposed to be like like a fun experience, but it's not actually a race to be taken seriously. I mean, yes, there's points Is that there you can win. Is there a winner and there's points? Yeah. Oh. But it's like not an exciting race. Like it's just... I literally was watching it and I was like, this is really, really boring. But apparently most NASCAR races aren't like this. Oh my God, I'm sorry. Speaking of NASCAR, there is one of our followers. Her name is Chandler. She said that her theory is that Formula One has uh, trademarked the Formula One Grand Prix of Chicago. Grand Prix of Chicago is because NASCAR races in Chicago and they don't want them to use the term Grand Prix. But some people have started referring to the NASCAR race as a Grand Prix. Mm. And that's when Formula One is going to step in and be like, it's not a Grand Prix. Mm. So that's why they've trademarked it. Okay. So there might so not actually it might be not race. actually be for race purposes. It could just be because Grand Prix connotation is yeah. with Formula One. So, okay. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Mm-hmm. I, I don't really don't. Look for David Malukas. I'd be really happy. But And for us, because our friend lives there. And for us, yes. Yeah. Because our friend lives there in motorsport girls weekend but um yeah i just don't need another american street course Mm -mm. street (laughs) street race (laughs) we'll go into f1 academy real quick here okay last piece of news f1 academy and i i don't know much it was hannah who was telling me about this okay yeah in f1 academy news um a couple days ago there was three driver signings which huge hamda al kubasi signed with red bull because they're taking F1 Academy is taking F1 liveries this year, if you remember. Um, so she signed. 
Does that mean she's part of the Red Bull Driver program now? Uh, I don't necessarily know like how that works in terms of like driver mm-hmm. academies and whatnot, but she is a she is involved in the Red Bull Racing family. Love that. Um, her sister Amna Al Kubasi signed with Visa Cash App RB. Oh, yes, I love that. So yeah, it's uh, I had originally said to Emma, I was like, oh, I'm pretty sure they both signed with Red Bull. We're I was half right. You're half uh, right. Visa Cash App RB is the sisters half, are with the sister yeah. team. Exactly. Yes. That's yeah. So cute. So congratulations to both of them. That is super, yeah. just like outstanding. Um, also Red Bull signed Emily De Hughes. She's another F1 um, Academy driver. Yeah, but she's a she's another Dutch driver. Okay. Um, her last name is D E uh, space H E U S. De house. De house. Okay. Um, and yeah, so she's going to be also competing under the Red Bull Racing um, team. That's interesting. And she's an F1 Academy driver? Mm-hmm. Well, no. They're on- yes, yes. They are only, these F1 teams are only required to have one driver. Like one female driver represents the, like have the livery and everything. Oh, uh, it's not both of them on the team that are supposed to? There's only 15 drivers and there's 10 F1 teams. Yeah, no, you're right. So for Red Bull to sign two of them, I feel like that's something. Like they... But you wouldn't have one car be Red Bull livery and one car be just like well, they're not on the same. livery. Oh, so I so the teams within F1 Academy are not taking on no. Red... Or, or sorry, they're not taking on F1 team names and liveries. It's no. just drivers are, are taking on mm-hmm. team liveries. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. So it's like with F2, yeah. um, Iwasa had the Red Bull livery, but he mm-hmm. raced with, uh, I think on Dams, with mm. uh, alongside Arthur Leclerc, mm-hmm. who I think had the F- Ferrari livery because mm-hmm. he was part of the F1. He was part of the F1 Driver Academy. Gotcha. So you had a Red Bull and a Ferrari livery on those cars because those drivers came from the from representing programs. Yeah, yeah. But the team itself is is Dams. Gotcha. gotcha I think gotcha. it was. I could okay. be wrong, but that's... Yeah. So there could be as little as 10 drivers with liveries and the other five could just be sponsorship livery it would just be team livery or team livery it'd be like the regular like whatever team that they're on yeah interesting well red bull's got two and and v carb has one and i believe that there were some other signings earlier in the year as well so i mean we have um, bia with mclaren yes yeah yeah that's so true we have bia um Marta. maya wong was with ferrari mm-hmm. so she'll take that and then um yeah Oh, Chloe Chambers also was with Haas. Okay. And then uh, Marta's uh, out. Is she, she age out? Oh, I don't know. And there was um, a driver with Alpine. I forget. Um, Carrie Schreiner is with Sauber. And oh, Dorian Penn. I totally forgot about her, but she's Mercedes. And that she was huge. is from Iron Dame. Yes. So she's part, she's a an IMSA driver. No, WEC. Oh, well, WEC. No, yeah. IMSA. Oh, I thought, maybe they're maybe she I does thought the they same. were whack, but yeah, okay. But now she's with Mercedes. Well, but I'm pretty sure Marta Mercedes. Garcia aged out. Interesting. I didn't know that. Huh. Well, oh, you're talking about Abby pulling. She's Alpine. Alpine. Yeah. Okay, that's right. I was like, is it Ali? I can't remember. Yeah, Marta will be competing in the Formula Regional European Championship with Prema this coming season. Oh, because I'm pretty sure she after she won um, okay. F1 Academy last year, she was too old. Interesting. That Anyways. is F1 Academy news. We were kind of all over the place there. Yeah, a little bit, but... But that's okay. With F1 Academy, there's just... There's not as much coverage mm-hmm. of it, obviously, like, in terms of, like, news outlets and whatnot. So you kind of have to, like... That's why did, I took we, a second. I like, went back. And I'm like, oh, who's actually signed? That was an update on all the motorsports. Wait, what? If you haven't watched our David Lucas episode yet, please do. Yes. Um, if you can watch it on YouTube please do because and i think that it'll help yeah i think that it like provides a little bit more context as to why we're laughing the entire time yeah um also thank you again david for coming on yeah he's the best He was actually the best i'm excited to go to an indie car race this year and actually like meet him in person because mm-hmm. i feel like he'd be the person that would be like hey guys what are you doing here 100 <laughs> percent, he would uh. he'd be like whoa track dog <laughs> um also and, he called us his favorite podcast i just want to put that out there Thank i know you. i know <laughs> yeah he's truly uh such an easy person to interview because he just makes you as interviewer feel comfortable mm-hmm. and he's comfortable very and personable very it's friendly. not like a like a cut and dry interview like question and question it's like 
we're gonna have just a conversation like that felt more like a conversation yeah and that's what you said when you're editing it you're like it's easy mm-hmm. um we're working on potentially getting one of his teammates on <laughs> knock on wood knock on wood we're hoping uh, he said he's gonna put in a good word for us so, so. we're trying we're um trying. But yeah, if you haven't watched that, please do. And go um, like and subscribe. Yeah, I wasn't going to say it. I'm glad you did. I feel like we have to. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hit to my ego to say that. <laughs> to say like and subscribe. Smash that like button. <laughs> <laughs> Turn on notifications. Uh, we're going to end it there. Uh, <laughs> that was an update on all the motorsports news this past week. We are Track Talk. Good ciao for now. <laughs>